Well, today I want to show you how you can use your lithium house battery bank to actually trickle charge and maintain your chassis battery if you have a motorhome like us or if you have a truck and towable situation and you can probably just use the same approach to uh, trickle charge your your truck starter battery. Now we're gonna do this using a, uh, an inexpensive PWM solar charge controller. So it's gonna be a DC to DC type of charging setup. Now I've been uh, using this setup for the last year or so. It's worked very well and I wanna walk you through how it works and, and why it works the way it works and take you through my setup and uh, maybe it'll give you some ideas for something you can do on your own RV. So let's, let's dig right into it. Now typically when we're talking about trickle charging your starter battery, it's because it's going to be sitting for a long time, maybe through the winter or it's going to be in storage. So why would we need to trickle charge it when we're actually out using the RV and camping and boondocking and stuff like that? And the reason is uh, that there still are some little parasitic draws on the chassis battery, at least on our rig, because there's just a lot of stuff connected to it. and. Uh, when we sit for a long period of time, say three weeks or sometimes a month in the same spot, and you haven't uh, started up your engine to, to charge that battery back up and top it off, it's possible that you know when it's full at say 12.6 or 12.7 volts that you know it might drop down to 12.4 or even lower depending upon you know what you're doing and how it's uh, hooked up. So you know it's nice to be able to just keep that chassis battery topped off all the time and that's why I wanted to, to hook up this trickle charge setup on our rig. In order to understand how the uh, lithium battery bank is able to recharge our chassis lead acid battery bank we have to talk about you know how voltage affects the flow of current or the directional flow of current in a charging circuit. The, uh, the current flow is actually going to flow from the higher voltage source to the lower voltage source. So in our case, our lithium battery bank typically sits at 13.2 volts, sometimes 13.4, and our lead acid battery bank, you know, when it's fully topped off, it usually sits at 12.6, 12.7 volts. So if we were to just connect those two battery sources together directly, the uh, charging energy would come from the uh, lithium battery bank which is at a higher voltage and it would flow into the lead acid battery bank. Now if we had two lead acid batteries, they're both sitting at 12.6 volts, there would be little to no current flow in between them. They would be uh, balanced. So with the lithium battery bank sitting at a higher voltage, we're going to see some current flow over into the uh, lower voltage lead acid battery bank. But we still have to have something in between to regulate the voltage because we still don't want to overcharge the, uh, the chassis battery, the lead acid battery. We want to keep it nicely maintained in, a, in an inexpensive PWM charger with a nice little charging profile for a lead acid battery you know, that's, that only needs to operate at a low current is perfect for this setup. This uh, little PWM solar charge controller actually has everything that I needed for this setup. First of all, it's it's waterproof, so you know it's sitting down here in the battery bank, which you know gets some road stuff flying up every once in a while. And it's a fourth stage charger, so it's gonna maintain the batteries properly. It automatically detects between 12 volts and 24. It works as a, an isolator, so since the current flow is only from the uh, lithium batteries through to the chassis battery, I don't have to worry about you know any back feeding. And the way I have it set up is really simple. So it has uh, two inputs for your solar panels typically. I have those inputs wired to the, uh, the lithium battery bank. So that's going to be about 13.2 to 13.4 or so volts coming in. And the output, which would normally be your charge battery, in this case my chassis battery, that's wired to the, uh, the output, the two positive and negative output wires. Now that's basically the setup. There's a load uh, pair of wires, so a positive and negative for uh, 
a DC load if you wanted to uh, power something there. I don't have anything connected to that, uh, that setup. So it's been connected uh, full time basically for the last year or so and working just fine. When I, when I check the, uh, the battery status on my panel here, I can see that you know, it's always pretty much balanced with the uh, chassis battery. One thing I did do is to actually install a circuit breaker though between the, uh, the charge controller and the battery that it's charging. And the reason I did that was, first of all, I wanted a way to be able to just quickly disconnect it so it works as a, as a battery disconnect for that charger. And also, early on, I noticed that uh, sometimes when I would start the engine, there would be this surge of current. And I had this little fuse on there before and it kept blowing little fuses. It's a 20 amp charger, so I put a 20 amp circuit breaker on there. And uh, since putting the circuit breaker in, it, it, it doesn't really have that issue anymore. So I'll leave uh, links to all this stuff in the video description and drop me a comment. Let me know what you think of this uh, setup. I look forward to seeing what you have to say. And you know, I hope this uh, gave you some ideas, helped you out, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.